Sega Dreamcast is an amazing console through and through. And one of my favorites, period. Why is that? Let me give you a little Dreamcast history, tell you why. Sega, always being innovative and ahead of its time, released the Dreamcast in the US December 1998. It was the first 128-bit console. Now, see, that's two years ahead of Sony's PlayStation 2, and three years ahead of Microsoft's Xbox and Nintendo's GameCube. It's also the first console to have a built-in and a detachable here. There you go. web browser. See, like right here, this is yeah, not Ethernet, but like a phone jack, so it was dial-up. But the Dreamcast not only lets you get online with a friend and play, you could also use it to surf the web and get on the internet itself. They also created um, mouse and keyboard controllers you could hook up to it to make that function easier. Not even the uh, Xbox Classic and the PS2 could do that. It also had these unique memory cards that were called VMUs which means virtual memory units. These weren't only memory cards that you could save games to, but these were also 8-bit portable game consoles. These VMUs sported a 1-inch black and white screen, directional pad, and A and B buttons. See, some games that you would save to this memory card had mini games that you could play on the go. And these little black ports on top not only fit into your controller, but with a second memory card, and a friend if you got one, you can play two player. Most importantly, the Dreamcast had amazing games. Draconis Cult of the Worm is an awesome but not well known Dreamcast game. It was released back in 2000 and still looks and plays great today. This game isn't quite the average hack and slash adventure game. First off, you get a choice between two characters, a male warrior named Kenrick and a sorceress named Eowyn. This is much like how on Castlevania 64, you got a choice between a vampire hunter named Reinhardt and a sorceress named Carrie. Also, the fighting in this game isn't as simple as one might think. You know, typically in adventure games, all you have to do is simply hold your shield out and wait for the bad guy to kindly stop attacking you. Now that actually gets meh, kinda boring. In this game, however, there is a certain hit detection that causes your character to drop his or her shield. This forces you to pay more attention and press the shield button every time you get hit. This actually makes you feel like you're fighting, and gives you a sense of accomplishment, especially when fighting a group of people. And there is a decent amount of violence. This game has all the awesome fantasy creatures that you know and love, like blue fighting pigs called Krujan, goblins, elves, trolls, minotaurs, giant bugs, and more. Also, this game plays kind of like an RPG. You see, there are these little blue fairy things called blessing wisps that you collect in every level. Usually hidden, these blue wisps 
freeze you in a Matrix-like movie sequence. Ooh, ain't that awesome? Collect five of these. That allows you to get two upgrades instead of one. So these are worth collecting because, hey, you know, two is better than one. The red blessing wisps that you find sometimes, they fully refill your life bar, so they're pretty good to find too. Now when you beat each level, you're automatically taken to an upgrade screen. Now from here, well, obviously, you can upgrade your character. You can choose to upgrade his rank, magic, offense, defense, you know, that kind of thing. And if you collected five of the blue blessing wisps, like mentioned earlier, you can do two of these upgrades at a time instead of one, build your character a lot faster. And the game does have a pretty good storyline as well. The Empire was devastated by the backlash. Just more than a hundred years ago, the magical destruction ended mankind's golden age. Its magnificent cities, gone. Its mighty wizards and wise sages, annihilated. Since the backlash, life became cheap and peace hard to come by. The nether races came out from their wasteland hiding places and relentlessly raided and pillaged where and whenever they pleased. Civilization barely held on. The game is actually pretty big. Every level makes you look around carefully and think outside the box. I haven't even beat this game myself. But I'm close. Seriously. The levels are huge. And beautiful. And the music really sets the mood for what's going on. You know, this really is one of the better looking Dreamcast games. Plus, this game has some awesome dialogue. Do you smell a human? I smell a human outside. Check it out. Where are those fools? Surely they should have been able to capture the weakling elf by now. We must know the secret word. I have a word for you. Die. Kenrick is an awesome and skilled warrior. He's also pretty good with magic. He also has a great way of reasoning with people. Look, you're unarmed, and I haven't killed you yet. So I must be one of the good guys, right? I suppose that makes sense. He's pretty sarcastic. Sorry, did I come at a bad time? Now, Eowyn, on the other hand, I find to be pretty boring. It's pretty much the same game, but she can't fight as good as Kenrick. And she delivers lines boringly. Uh, yeah. Well, come with me so you'll be safe. But she is, however, better than Kenrick when it comes to magic. You see, I kind of get into the games that I play, so I don't exactly want to be a girl. Laura Croft, on the other hand, is alright. She's hot. This girl kind of reminds me of Marilyn Manson. My only complaint is lack of freedom. Normally in adventure games you go wherever you want and come back anytime you damn well please. This game, you pick the level on a selection screen. Sometimes you don't really have a choice. The, the game's saying, look, damn it, you've avoided this level long enough, and now you're going to play it. And you can't go back to the previously defeated levels either. Oh. Really, it's a small complaint. 
Overall, I give this game a personal 8 out of 10, which makes it a great game. Now, enjoy some more awesome dialogue. Stop there. You, little person. I assume that means me. I need to talk to your chief about the banner that you trolls stole. What? You talk too fast. No me get what you say. You were doing some bad things with your new toy, so I had to take it away from you. Don't talk to Rocka like a child. Rocka smash! Or, Chief, me, go talk. What is Chief? No move, fish. Bad fish. <sighs> what am I? A language tutor? I guess I have no choice but to fight you to get by. Ah, uh, fight. That me know. Greetings and many thanks. I am Lilas. Why did they have you locked up, Lilas? You say my name quite well for a human. Maybe you are part lizard. No take shiny. My shiny. Sorry, big guy. I need the shiny. Then we fight for shiny. Funny thing is, that was my plan, too. Ooh, stand the guy behind me. <laughs>